When an eagle suddenly snatches a little boy, his parents are shocked, but the reason behind it surprises them even more. It was an incredible day. The family didn't often get a chance to just hang out together, but this day was different. They were just completely relaxed. Tom had a bit of free time in his schedule, and he wanted to spend it with his family. He was spending the afternoon with his wife and toddler son. Ralph had just started walking, and he was waddling around the garden. His parents were lying on the lush green grass, some drinks in their hands, and a few snacks on a blanket next to them. It was idyllic. But things were suddenly going to take a dark turn. The toddler wandered to the taller grass beyond the lawn. He was bending down to look at some of the pretty wildflowers when something shocking happened. Out of nowhere, a massive eagle swooped down from the big tree and snatched the little boy. His parents were shocked, and before they could even respond, the eagle flew up with the baby. The parents ran towards them. How would they stop the eagle from taking their little boy? He was still flying pretty low, but he could take off at any moment. What if he dropped him when they were too high? It was terrifying. And the sudden attack was made so much worse because the eagle that had come down out of nowhere was one they recognized. The situation was scary, and no one knew how it would turn out. The parents feared for Ralph's life, but were also puzzled as to what had led this particular eagle to do such a thing. The family had met the eagle a few years before, under some very strange circumstances that they would never forget. But now, Tom feared that one of his proudest moments could have been a big mistake and put his child in danger. Tom's family had been living on their ranch for generations, and after finishing his degree, he couldn't wait to come back home. After spending so much time in the city, he was excited to get back to the wide open spaces. And it was even more exciting because he was bringing his young wife home with him. His parents were getting ready to retire and a new generation would take over the ranch. But Tom was going to make some changes. He wanted to run his ranch with better conservation practices and he had loads of plans. But first, they had some fun. He took his wife Carla to rock climb on the cliffs of their ranch. Most of the land consisted of grazing fields that were great for animals and planting crops, essential elements that would help them build their business. But what really excited Tom was being free on the cliffs. Stepping in the serene landscape and taking in the fresh air were like catching up with a long lost love. It was amazing. But even doing chores on the farm was an enjoyable activity for Tom. One day, he was checking the fences near the narrow river that ran through the property. Carla had a day off of work and brought him lunch to eat. They were just setting things up when suddenly Carla shouted that she saw something strange in the bushes on the other side of the river. At first, Tom thought that it might have just been a very large fish, but then he saw the same thing struggling on the surface of the water. The creature had wings and it certainly didn't belong in the river. Tom took his shoes off and got closer. He wanted to see what it was. It was a large bird, but he couldn't quite figure out what it was. Either way, he wasn't going to let the bird die. The bird was stuck to the branches, and without help, it wouldn't survive. Tom jumped into the river and went after the bird. Fortunately, it was a hot day, and the river wasn't flooding. They often went swimming there. It was completely safe to go into the water. But the spontaneous rescue mission wasn't going to be as simple as he had planned. As he swam across the river, Tom remained unsure about the bird's species. When the creature's head appeared above water, he recognized it as a young eagle. It was ensnared in debris and fishing lines, struggling intensely. Its efforts to break free only made the entanglement worse, exacerbated by the swift river current. The eagle was in a desperate situation, and the current tugged at it continuously, posing a constant threat. Tom had to move fast or the eagle would drown. He quickly swam towards the eagle, but looking at the tangled mess, it was going to be much harder than he imagined to cut it free. The eagle's wings and feet were stuck in fishing wire and even a piece of netting. He was going to have to be very careful not to injure the eagle even further. All that rubbish must have floated down the river. Somehow, this innocent animal had gotten caught in it and now its life was in danger. The easiest thing he could do was to pick up the entire thing and carry it out. Then, they could take their time to cut the eagle free. The tangled mess was stuck to some branches, but he should be able to get it all out, if he only had the tiniest bit of cooperation from the young eagle. 
The bird might have been tangled up pretty well, but its beak was loose and it was not happy with its predicament. Each time Tom tried to lift it out of the water, it tried to bite, making Tom jump and lose his grip. The nets and everything made it heavy, and it didn't help that he had to avoid a massive beak too. Tom tried to calm the eagle down by talking to it, but this bird was a real fighter. Subsequently, Tom started calling the eagle Rocky, but Rocky was not willing to make peace. Some animals might understand when humans are trying to help them, but this eagle did not. Tom's efforts to save him just seemed to make him angry. Carla called out to Tom to use his shirt, so he took off his shirt and put it gently over the eagle's head. This seemed to relax the animal enough to get him out of the water. Finally, Tom could swim back to the other side of the river and take the eagle with him. With Carla's help, they slowly started cutting the fishing wire and net off him. They had to be careful not to cut the eagle, but as long as Rocky had the shirt over his head, he was calm. This helped with their rescue efforts and at last, he was free. But despite having his freedom, the eagle did not look good. His wing was bent badly and had a lot of feathers missing, and one of his talons seemed to be injured. They were not letting him go in the condition he was in. He would need a lot more help. They carefully wrapped him in the shirt to hold his injured wing and then placed him in the picnic basket that Carla had brought with her. They wanted to keep his body as still and secure as possible, preventing any attempt to flap his wings and potentially worsen his injuries. Then, they took Rocky back to their house and phoned the local vet who worked with their animals. They didn't know of any wildlife shelters in the area, but he needed medical care. Soon, the vet came out and brought a birdcage with him. He helped to bandage the eagle's wing and set his talon. Then he gave him an injection to help him calm down and heal. They were far from a local wildlife center, and as badly hurt as the eagle was, he advised that most of those places would likely give up on the eagle. The couple decided they would try to nurse him back to health on their own. The vet could give them instructions on how to feed the eagle. He even gave them some vitamins to sprinkle on top of his meat to help him get better quicker. They kept him in the small birdcage for a while to ensure he didn't move too much. They used chopsticks to give him meat without touching him. At first, it was too hard to balance with one talon injured. Using the other to eat wasn't much of an option. So they brought the food close to his mouth. Since they gave him small pieces at a time, he could just eat them at once. He wasn't super impressed with this arrangement. The eagle was still very grumpy, but eventually he was too hungry to refuse and he started eating. As his talon got better, he could grip the food with the injured foot while balancing on the other. This gave him a little bit of dignity back. They could give him bigger pieces of food. His wing was still a problem as he still couldn't move it much. Then, he suddenly had a setback. Birds don't generally show when they aren't feeling well. This is because showing illness could mean abandonment and death in the wild. Often, by the time humans realize they are sick, they are already very seriously ill. The vet had warned Tom and Carla about this and that's why they quickly sprang into action when Rocky refused to eat a few meals. At that stage, he was still just tolerating the humans, but he did like his food. Not eating could be an indication of something serious. They once again called for the vet and he came out as quickly as possible. This time, the eagle was a lot more aware and his beak was still very dangerous. He also had better use of his talons at that stage. He had certainly mellowed out with Carla and Tom and he wasn't as instantly aggressive each time they got close, but he didn't know or trust the vet. They had to make the difficult choice of sedating him to examine him fully. They had to find out what was troubling him. At the same time, sedation is very dangerous in most animals, especially with recovering animals. The vet only gave him a small amount of sedation and he got to work quickly. They checked his wing, but underneath it they found something shocking. A piece of metal, possibly from a fishing hook, had broken off inside his skin. It had created an infection in the soft tissue on his body, but was hidden by his wing. They had to remove the foreign object and clean him up. Then he would need to get another round of antibiotics and hopefully he would be strong enough to survive. But first, they had to hope he would wake up from the sedation. The vet gave him meds that would wake him up, but it didn't seem to be working. He gave Rocky a little more and then suddenly he woke up completely. He was groggy and probably in some pain from the removal, but he was back inside his little cage and he could rest. 
After that, he started to heal a lot quicker. The pain might have made him more grumpy too because he seemed to be calmer after that. There were even times that he seemed excited to see Tom and Carla when they went to him. He was using his wings more and flapping them, getting them stronger. They didn't want to release him straight out of a small cage, he needed time to test his wings first. So Tom built him a larger enclosure outside with a lot of different spots where he could sit. He could fly around a bit and get ready for freedom. After a few weeks, they were ready to release him at last. They opened the enclosure and allowed him to go outside. At first, Rocky didn't seem to understand that he could go. He flew to the high trees next to the house and just sat there. But soon enough, he spread his massive wings and took off into the sky. It was beautiful to see him be free. But for Carla and Tom, it was bittersweet to see him go. They hoped he would stay safe in the great outdoors. A few days later, they were shocked to hear an eagle call just outside the house. When they went to look, it was Rocky, back in the branches above them. He spent many days and nights in the tall tree, just hanging out, watching them as they lived their lives. They opened the large enclosure to allow him to go in if he wanted, but he preferred the view from the trees. Tom decided that he would build an artificial eagle's nest in those trees. Rocky was free, and he came and went as he wanted, but they felt it was rude not to have a bed for such a regular visitor. It was a wild endeavor, finding out the best way to build such a nest and then getting it set up high enough for Rocky to actually use it. But the first time they saw Rocky sleeping in the nest made all the efforts worth it. He felt like family at that stage. Then they got wonderful news. Their family was going to grow again. They were going to have a baby. It was an exciting time for the couple. Another generation would be welcomed onto the ranch. After the baby was born, Rocky was waiting for them when they got home from the hospital. He had flown down to branches that were lower than normal, and it was like he was trying to figure out what the squealing object in Carla's hands was. But he must have gotten used to these new sounds because he still came for his regular visits as their son, Ralph, grew older. They enjoyed being outside and giving the baby plenty of fresh air underneath the trees in their garden. They also took him for walks on the ranch and next to the river. And often, Rocky watched them from above. Baby Ralph was turning into a toddler, and they tried spending as much time together as they possibly could. Ranching is a busy life, and since they had both crops and animals, this chaos could be doubled at times. Carla hadn't gone back to work yet, and she took the baby to Tom while he was working. But Tom also made sure he spent any free time he had with his family too. And that was what they were doing that lovely spring day out in the garden. The sun was setting much later now, and it gave them more time to spend outdoors. It was the perfect idyllic day. They could watch Ralph waddle along the lawn as he was just walking steadily, and Tom and Carla could relax together and have some snacks. The calls of the eagle above them just made the day even more perfect. Ralph was heading out of the manicured garden closer to the longer grass beyond. He wanted to smell a wildflower that was growing there. Carla just got up to bring him back when suddenly everything changed. From out of nowhere, Rocky swooped down and snatched the little boy by his clothing. Grabbing the child, he started to fly away. Tom and Carla were shocked. Was the eagle jealous of their child? Do eagles even get jealous? Did he think of the small boy as prey? Had he been waiting for this opportunity all along? Saving Rocky was one of the proudest things they had ever done as a couple. Was it now going to become one of the biggest regrets in their life? They didn't know why he could be doing this, but they had to get the baby. The eagle wasn't going very high at that stage, but if he flew higher, they would have no hope of reaching him. And they didn't even want to think what could happen if he dropped the boy from a height. It was terrifying. Both of them ran towards the bird, calling him and their son in turn. But strangely enough, Ralph wasn't crying. He must have been in shock and had no clue what was going on. As they got to the tree lining, something strange happened. Instead of trying to fly away from them, Rocky started turning. Carla had walked to the side of the grass and he flew to her and put the boy on the ground next to her. Then he sat down a little bit away from them. Carla grabbed her son and cried hysterically. Of course, this made him cry too, but he kept trying to tell them something. He was trying to explain what happened and why the eagle snatched him. The reason behind it surprised everyone. Ralph kept making a hissing noise. Something clicked for Tom and he ran back to where Rocky had first picked up the baby. 
There it was, a massive snake that looked ready to attack. His head was right underneath the flower that Ralph wanted to smell. If the eagle hadn't acted, the snake would have bitten the boy right in his face. They caught the snake and would later release him far from their house, but first, they had to check Ralph. Amazingly, the toddler didn't have a scratch on him. His clothing was in tatters where the eagle grabbed hold of it, but he didn't touch his skin at all. Besides some light redness where his clothing pulled during flight, Ralph was perfectly fine. But the same thing could not be said for Rocky. The boy was heavier than his regular catch, and his talons were hurt by the weight he picked up. He couldn't close them. Tom went closer to help the eagle, and to his surprise, the eagle allowed him to pick him up. They took him back to the large enclosure, and after another vet visit, they gave his talons the time they needed to recover. Then, Rocky was once again free to come and go as he pleased. And from then on, his family was always grateful that they had a protector watching out for them from the sky. Thanks for watching. Join us again for even more incredible stories.